Hi, I'm Matt Gary with SSBT, and I'm passionate about powerlifting. I have 28 years in the sport as a competitor, national referee, committee member, and chairman, as well as a meet director and promoter. But the one thing that has brought me more meaning, joy, and satisfaction than anything else is coaching. I've written programming, done countless hours of one-on-one, -on -one, in-person coaching, conducted and participated in seminars, taught coaching certifications, and I've been blessed to be a national team head coach five times and an assistant or personal coach on more than 25 national teams. I've attended and coached at 22 IPF World Championships, 16 of which have been overseas, and I've been lucky enough to coach 38 world champions in equipped and raw competition. I've been to one World Games every single Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio since 2008, and more local, state, and regional competitions than I can even recall. Having said that, there is nothing about powerlifting that excites me more than game day coaching. I even wrote an ebook about it, which is available in the link below. Competitions are the proving grounds. It's where the rubber meets the road, and lifters are afforded the opportunity to test their mettle against others in hopes of achieving something they've never done before, their own personal best or personal record. There are a lot of recap and highlight videos online. This video is not that. This video is my game day analysis of what happened. Think of this as taking a deeper look at the X's and O's of coaching, attempt selection, execution, and how all of that affects outcomes. Please let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, share the video, and please feel invited to drop a comment below. And thank you for watching. Before every IPF World Championships, participating countries and federations are required to submit what we call nominations. And matter of factly, that is the country nominating a specific lifter to participate in their respective weight class. So in this case, in the 76 kilo weight class, we're going to be looking primarily at the top three competitors, Carlina Tongate of New Zealand, Jessica Bittner of Canada, and Agata Shitko of Poland. To a lesser extent, we'll take a look at Kimberly Walford, Sophia Ellis, and Dana McNeil, but not until the deadlifts. So mind you, these numbers that you see here are not necessarily their personal bests, but what they are is they are supposed to be a representation, or matter of factly, what the lifter achieved at their qualifying meet for the world championships. Occasionally, countries will put forth nominations that are inaccurate in terms of the lifters' all-time personal bests. They may even put forth a total that is the sum of their personal bests. But these numbers in this particular case for most of these lifters do look accurate for this competition. And as I said, we're primarily going to be focusing our efforts on the top three women here. Key and important is just because someone is nominated at the top of the list does not necessarily mean that's how the story is going to unfold. The nominations do not always hold true to form, and that's key to remember in a lot of these international matchups. Taking a look at our scouting report for the 76 kilo weight class, you'll notice that each one of these competitors holds a world record. Carlina Tongatea of New Zealand holds the world record in the squat and total, both of which were achieved at Commonwealths in New Zealand, so essentially a home game championship for her. She is without question on paper the, the strongest lifter in the room. She's very well rounded. She's done 14 competitions, two of which have been international. Undoubtedly she'll use the chips in the world record on the squat and leverage that to her advantage. She favors conservative jumps. Returning IPF world champion from 2022, Jessica Bittner from Canada, 
is known for her deadlift prowess. She wound up pulling 261.5 kilos, which at the time was the heaviest deadlift ever recorded in the IPF for a female. Uh, she did that last year to secure the win on body weight against Akita Shitko. So these two have history. Matter of fact, all three of these women have history just coming off having competed against each other at the Sheffield uh, back in March. But again, back to Jess, extremely reliable, makes a ton of lifts, uh, about eight out of nine. And finally, Agatha Shitko of Poland, most notably uh, known for her bench press prowess, also an equipped lifter. She is coming off of an injury. She's a little bit less reliable, but she also favors conservative jumps and will undoubtedly use a chip in the bench press. So it will be exciting to see how this weight class unfolds against the clash of these three titans. Taking a look at our scoreboard before the competition even begins, the lifters will submit their opening attempts. And just based on their opening attempts, we have a prognosis total or a forecasted total. Carlina Tongatea is essentially in the lead with a 565 kilo total. Agatha Shitko would be in second with 555. And Jessica Bittner at 547.5 kilos would be in third place. Now again, none of the lifters have taken any attempts and this is just a forecast or a prognosis based on their openers that they have submitted. What is also really important to note are the body weights. So as you can see, Jessica Bittner is the lightest of the three women. So she has the body weight advantage which means she can tie a lifter's total and win or move up a placing on body weight. Carlina Tongatea is the heaviest, so matter of factly, she would have to out total, which means lift more than the other two women. Uh, and the lot numbers are key and important. The lot number determines the order in which the lifters weigh in, but more importantly, the order in which they take a weight if they both call for the same weight on the bar. Uh, Carlina has the highest lot number, which means if all three women were to call for the same weight, let's say 200 kilos in the squat, Carlina would have the advantage of going last. So it's important to recognize these things and take inventory of your lifters at the start of competition. But what's really crucial is to realize that these forecasted totals and this prognosis doesn't always hold true to form. Uh, lifters are going to miss lifts and the placings can and will likely change throughout the day. All right, so now we're gonna get into the competition. First up in the squat is Agata Shitko from Poland. Looks like she is opening with 190 kilos, well within her means. She walks out, gets steady. And she's in the meet with a very comfortable opener. Next up, Canadian Jessica Bittner, opening at 207.5. Remember, her squat PB is 220 kilos. She steadies herself. Jess is a taller lifter, has long femurs. Not advantageous for the squat, but she buries it, comes on up, and successfully completes a comfortable opener for her. She looks pleased. Fist bump with Kara. Garrett Benley, uh, head Canadian coach. Now we've got the favorite, Carlina Tongatea, world record holder in the squat at 223.5 kilos that she achieved at Sheffield, and she is opening on 215 kilos. Perhaps a little bit of a heavy opener based on her PB, but this might give you an insight that she's going to go for the world record. And good, a successful opener. Not sure what the head referee was looking at, to be quite honest with you. That looked deep enough to me. We're going to check out the replay. I oftentimes don't know why a head referee will give a red light when the side referees uh, give whites. Now, so you'll notice these are the standings just after the opening round of squats. And again, we're paying attention to uh, primarily those top three. Now we're going into the second round, Agatha takes a conservative five kilo jump to 195 kilos for her second squat. And she's gonna walk it out. 
get steady, get the command. And that one looked comfortable. A little stickier than the first, a little bit slower, uh, just coming out above parallel, but three white lights. Seems to be pleased with that one. We'll check out the replay. And again, convincingly deep, which is nice here at the IPF level. Jessica Bittner is on 215. Again, her PB is 220. So she took a seven and a half kilo jump to her second attempt. And wow, Jess really buried that one. Knees came in just a little bit, but successfully completed the lift. So presumably, you know, going a little bit deeper on that second attempt probably took a little bit out of the gas tank. So I'm guessing that she would aim to tie her PB at 220 on her third rather than going for a PB at 222. Here's Carlina Tongatea coming in at just under the world record. So she jumped seven and a half kilos to 222.5. And presumably this is gonna set her up just as kind of a stepping stone to taking a shot at the world record on her third attempt. Yes, and a very comfortable squat for her. A little bit more aggressive and assertive, faster descent, and gets all three white lights. That one looks good. There's the replay. Yep, she is undoubtedly deep enough on that one and gets three whites. So again, at the end of the second round, we've got Carlina in first, Jessica in second, and then I believe Agatha was down there at uh, sixth or seventh place. She took a really small jump, only went up to 197.5 kilos for her third and final attempt. So a small increase favors those conservative jumps, but knows her body, buries the squat, really sticky, kind of a limit lift there, if you will, but meets the standard. At least two out of three, that's all you need. And she goes three for three in the squat which is exciting to see. Yep, that was deep enough. I don't, again, don't know what the head referee was looking at, but gets out of the sticking point. Jessica Bittner here on 220 kilos is gonna to attempt to tie her personal best in competition. A smart call from the Canadian coaches and her personal coach, Eric Helms. She takes it down, not quite as deep as the second attempt, but seems very pleased with that and three white lights. Really excited, build some positive momentum heading into the bench press. Yep, long femurs didn't go quite as deep. A little bit of knee cave, but still comes out of it. Looking good, looking strong, looking happy. All right, so we've got Carlina Tongatea setting up for a new IPF world record of 225.5 kilos. That's going to be about 497 pounds. You can see they're adding the chips to the bar. And she is coming out for a world record attempt. This will break her own world record and give her a nice 0.5 kilo chip advantage heading into the bench press. So this is just a small increase only a three kilo increase from her second to third should be within Carlina's wheelhouse. She sets up, she really built to squat. She's got that short, compact frame, thick thighs, wide hips, short torso, and she is a unit. Fantastic. Smashes the world record at 225.5. She's intense. She's fired up, waves to the crowd, three white lights, and just an awesome squat session between these three competitors, all of them going three for three, which is what you wanna see, right? Good attempt selection, good execution. You've got Carlina in first place at 225.5, Jess in second at 220, and Agatha Shitko is in fifth place at 197.5. So a very good squat session. And on to the bench presses. Jessica Bittner, long arms, known for her deadlift. She's opening at 100 kilos, 220 pounds. And a nice, easy opener, smokes that. Three white lights, really confident. 
building some momentum. Fist bumps head Canadian national team coach Garrett Bentley. And my guess is she would go to about 105, that her, uh, considering that her PB is 107.5. Now we've got Carlina opening on 115. I believe she's got a personal best of 126 kilos. That is her coach, uh, Dominic Basabas from New Zealand, New Zealand Performance Academy. And this should be a comfortable opener for Carlina at 115, 253 pounds. And yeah, that's a real easy opener. Good looking opener. Secures the world record in the squat. Don't know what she got a yellow uh, card for there in the bench press from the head referee, but it looked like a solid attempt to me. Nice and smooth, gets her in the game. Good opening attempt. Now, Agatha Shitko is opening on 145, which is 319 pounds. This is one kilo below her world record in the bench press. Last year, she didn't take advantage of any world record chips. I would suspect she will do so on her subsequent attempts. Oh, absolute smoke show. It's really just going to be a question of did she hit elbow depth? And it looks like she gets three white lights. Very pleased with that. And this is where she's making up most of her ground. Notice the baggy t-shirt to kind of hide the elbow depth there. Doesn't use the form-fitting t-shirt. Uh, Agatha, undoubtedly her event to lose, is in the lead. Uh, Carlina's at fourth, and Jess is further down the list. But again, Jess is just trying to hold serve here. Not going to... Uh, make up much ground, just doesn't want to lose any. So she's at 105 kilos, a five kilo jump from her opener. Bang on. She smashes that. Really solid second attempt. Uh, probably good for 110, which would be a PB. But I suspect that the coaches will kind of play a conservative and just build the total to get those extra two and a half. So my guess is they'll go to 107.5 for her third and final attempt. And here comes Carlina on 120 kilos. So uh, presumably not gonna take a shot at a PB. Her PB is 126. That was probably a New Zealand record. So she, more than likely, she's just gonna jump two and a half to five on her third, assuming this is successful. So 120 kilos, 264 pounds for her second attempt. And a little bit slower than the first one, but certainly meets the standard. Looks good. Again, another red light with a yellow card from the head referee. Don't know exactly what the head referee is calling there. Um, looks like she obeys all the commands. Her head stays down flat. I don't, I don't know what they're seeing there, but anyway, good lift. And finally, here we go. Agatha Shitko is coming out. And this is for a world record of 153 kilos. So about 337 pounds. She's going to take a chip advantage here and try to take back the chip that Carlina used on her squat. You got to take those chips when they're available. That half a kilo can be worth so much at the end. Or did she jump it? And she actually jumps the press command on this lift, uh, interestingly enough. And apparently the referees, let's see what the lights say. One more yeah, light to really come quick. And you see how smooth it is with the replay, she but you're not the command, but the she does get credit for the lift. And so, yeah, good. actually the head referee it's caught that. That's what the yellow card was for. The uh, command, but the she's still in the lead on bench. Not. You know, I'm and on, if I'm just honest, building some so momentum. Close. Nobody's going to catch her. She's already got the gold medal in the bench press. Coming out for the final one, like I said, they would probably play it conservative. This is more than likely a good call for Jess to tie her PB at 107.5 kilos. Oh, and that looked really comfortable. You know, she probably had 110. And if she didn't have 110, she had, you know, 109 or something like that. And the bench press, you're just walking that fine line, particularly with some of these lifters with the longer arms. So, you know, when in doubt, better to take the two and a half than miss the five. So, Carlina Tongatea, 
coming out for her final bench press. And let's see the weight. I believe this one is 122.5. So she only went up 2.5 kilos from her second attempt. So this is 122.5 or 270 pounds for her third and final attempt. Again, just trying to build the total and stack attempts. And pretty tough at lockout. So really good call from her coaches, um, Dominic Basabas and Jason Clark of New Zealand, the head coach for the New Zealand national team. Really good call there as she squeezes out those last two and a half. So again, and here goes Agatha Shitko for her final attempt. Uh, she put in 156 kilos, so just a small jump, a three kilo jump. So this is like 342 pounds as she takes her final attempt. And again, using a chip. And she's coming up crooked, and this one's just a little bit too heavy for her. So Agatha finishes on 153, taking the gold medal and a new world record in the bench press, but really only losing a potential of three extra kilos there. But she's, you know, so far ahead of the rest of the field there in terms of the bench press. So not a big loss. Probably got the most that she could possibly get. So Agatha Shitko takes gold. Carlina Tongatea takes Silver and Great Britain's Sophia Ellis gets bronze in the bench with 120 kilos. And so here are the standings at subtotal. So at subtotal, you'll notice that Agatha Shitko is in the lead at 350.5. Carlina Tongatea is in second and Jess Bittner is in third. But after opening deadlifts, the prognosis will shift and the lead will change again. So right after the opening deadlifts, the lead will change, and Carlina will resume the lead with Agatha dropping to second and Jess remaining in third place. Heading into deadlifts, here's a little bit of a scouting report for the top six deadlifters. We have Jessica Bittner with a world record of 261.5 kilos, which she hit last year at the 2022 IPF World Championships in South Africa. She makes an average of 2.61 out of three deadlifts, so she's very reliable. Carlina's got the second best deadlift at 255, and then you can, you can see the remaining women here, Kim Walford, Dana McNeil, Sophia Ellis from Great Britain, and finally, Agatha Shitko, who of course is the best bench presser. She has the, has the weakest of the three, but all six of these women are supreme deadlifters. and. That is going to come into play in terms of the medals, in terms of jockeying for position. Jess naturally has the advantage as the strongest deadlifter. Uh, and because she will still be in third place, she's in third place at subtotal. But even after opening deadlifts, she'll close the gap a little bit. And the question is, is will she be able to use that monster deadlift to close the gap and overtake uh, both Agatha and Carlina? And furthermore, can Kim, Dana, and Sophia uh, utilize their deadlifting strength to be a factor, uh, potentially uh, push somebody off the podium and or grab a deadlift medal? All right, so now we're beginning the deadlifts. Agatha Shitko is first. She's opening on 220 kilos. She has a personal best of 240. She's got that double overhand hook grip, again, known for her bench press. Seems to be feeling pretty solid and all the way back from her injury after Sheffield and hits a really nice, comfortable opener at 220 kilos. We'll see the replay. Really no hesitation, maybe just off the floor, but a really solid opener. Hips through, shoulders back, looking good. My guess is she'll jump probably 10 to 230. We have Great Britain's Sophia Ellis opening on 225 kilos. That's four red plates, 496 pounds. And Sophia's an excellent deadlifter as well. 
She should make quick work of this. Favors that. She's got those long legs and really favors a wide, ultra wide sumo stance. I mean, feet pretty close to touching the plates, mixed grip, hips high. She starts in that hips high position. And wow, that was easy. What a fantastic opener for Sophia. Lightning fast. Builds a lot of confidence coming off the platform. Uh, it's the last event of the day. Lifters, you know, sometimes feel like they're riding on fumes, particularly in these quick eight lifter primetime flights at Worlds. And now we've got Kimberly Walford, legendary IPF lifter, seven time IPF world champion. She's won world championships in multiple weight classes, now lifting for the Virgin Islands. And she is coming out for a 230 kilo opening deadlift, 507 pounds. Probably a little bit heavier than I would recommend opening based on a 246 kilo PB, but perhaps she's projecting more and makes quick work of that. That looked comfortable. Three white lights. She's fired up. Confident. My guess is you're going to see probably a 10 kilo jump to 240. Kim's got the conventional stance, high hips, and makes quick work of 230. Now we've got USA's own Dana McNeil also opening on 230. The reason that she's going after Kim is because she has the higher lot number. So this is also 507 pounds for Dana. Dana serves in the military, so she uh, lives and serves in Japan. But deadlift looks a lot like Kim's in terms of form and function. She's tall, long, lean, gets one red light. That's her personal coach, Mike Tushier from Reactive Training Systems, but seems to be fairly pleased with the 230 kilo opener. Yeah, I don't know what the referee saw there in terms of lockout, but she did get one red card, but you only need uh, two out of three. Here comes your leader, uh, Carlina Tongatea, or I should say will be the leader after this opener. This 235 kilos uh, will put her, that's 518 pounds, will put her back in the lead over Agatha Shitko. And Carlina has a PB of 255 kilos makes quick work of that, looks comfortable, and three white lights. So the New Zealanders, the Kiwis, uh, travel the furthest. So looked like she was kind of sighing as she came off the platform. Don't know if fatigue was hitting her. Uh, but hey, she's in the meet, and she's so far seven for seven. Here comes Jessica Bittner from Canada, opening on 240 kilos. That is 529 pounds and makes quick work of that. You're looking at the best deadlifter of the group. Three white lights. She's confident. Fist bump to her coach. Again, here's the replay at 240, and she holds the world record. So my guess is she's going to jump somewhere between 10 and 12. Jessica does have that kind of leg shake and knee wobble on her uh, – Deadlifts, but nothing to worry about. So you can see now the standings after the opening rounds of deadlift. Carlina's comfortably in first place with a 12 and a half kilo lead over Agatha Shitko. Agatha comes out for a second attempt trying to get the crowd involved, and she opened on 220, and I believe this is 230 kilos, 507 for her second attempt. and a comfortable second attempt for Agatha. A little bit slower than the first, but that's what we expect, and three white lights. So it comes off confident, and my guess is she's probably gonna go to somewhere in the neighborhood of 237 and a half, or to tie her PB at 240 and push Carlina, or try to push Carlina, uh, you know, to take something higher and, and out of her comfort zone. Okay, so here's Sophia, 12 and a half kilo jump, from the opener, so she went from 
225 to 237 and a half. That's 523 pounds. And she, you know, her opener was arguably the fastest out of everyone's. Uh, so she should be supremely confident on this attempt at 237 and a half. Sophia had a great meet. She uh, was seven for seven at this point and really came in on top form. Hips high. A little bit slower off the ground, but man, then it really comes up like a rocket. She's fired up. She's smiling. Very pleased with that one. Kind of nods to her, her coach there. Three white lights. Outstanding deadlift, 237 and a half. Good, solid second attempt. Now we've got Virgin Islands, Kim Walford. As I said, 10 kilo jump. So she jumped up to 240 kilos, 529 pounds. And I believe she and Dana both take the same attempts here. But Kim had the lower lot number, which means she must go first. So Dana will go after her and get to see how this moves and then base her attempts off of that. Kim Walford has held the world record in the deadlift in multiple weight classes before. She comes out. She's fired up. Doesn't waste any time getting set up. And a little bit slower around the knee, but she's shaking her head. She looks fired up. Three white lights. Good, solid second attempt. And now she and her coach are just going to be looking to try to play the game. Kimberly not really in the running for the podium, so presumably just wants to try to get a deadlift medal. But she's two for two in the deadlift at 240. So now, like I said, Dana McNeil, she's coming out on 240 as well. This will uh, increase her total and move her from seventh place all the way up to fourth, at least momentarily. Again, a little bit slower than the opener, as it should be, but comfortable. And three white lights, good. So she got a red light on her first one. So whatever she did that didn't meet the standard on the first one, she corrected that for the second and got three white lights. Similar build to Kim, like I said before. Really long arms, conventional stance, solid lockout. She's good to go. Carlina only jumped up seven. So remember, she has a 255 kilo PB. But the thought process here is just build the total. Let me stay out in front. I haven't missed any lifts. This is my world championships to lose. That sort of mindset. And so she's coming out with a seven and a half kilo jump. And this should be comfortable for Carlina to continue to build and extend her lead. Okay. And, you know, kind of looked like the first one. Uh, a little sticky at the lockout, but she meets the standard. She's fine. And she has a word with, with her coach, Dom, there. And they are literally and figuratively just going to play the game here. They are just going to watch. She has the highest lot number in terms of the potential podium placers. And she is just going to play the game and try to pull after them uh, and stay out in front. Now, we've got Jess Bittner here, the world record holder. Like I said, she jumped 12 and a half kilos. This is up to 252 from 240. She's got some leg shake there and a little untidy. Gets one red on lockout. I didn't see the bar, uh, or I'm sorry, one red light with a blue card, which means maybe the bar went up and down. Yeah, I mean, ultimately this lift gets overturned, and I'm not sure why the jury overturned it, but it did get overturned. So. As it stands, um, that scoreboard is actually incorrect. 
Uh, yeah, now, now it's been corrected. So uh, you've got some spacing there between Carlina and Agatha, and then even spacing between Agatha and Jess. So Agatha is coming out for 240 kilos for final deadlift. This will tie a personal best and force Carlina to go up and beat her. And remember, Carlina is the heaviest. So she's matter of factly going to have to increase her deadlift to beat Agatha. But Agatha, slow off the floor, really struggles, finally gets her hips through and locks it out. Yes, she's fired up and a really good attempt call from the Polish team there. And so she is temporarily in the lead now, going eight for nine, the only lift that she missed. And so we can see the scores. So she is temporarily in the lead. And so Carlina, with 590.5 on total, will just have to bump her deadlift up two and a half kilos to secure a 593 kilo total and secure the W. So again, not going to take any risks. She is just going to take the low-hanging fruit. Jess Bittner now is in third place on 567.5 and quite a ways behind. Uh, you know, didn't get credit for the second deadlift, so they are having to do some calculus to determine can they potentially uh, catch you know, second place. Here's Sophia. Took a 7.5 kilo jump from 237 to 245. I think this is a really good attempt call based on how the second one looked. And this will be a personal best deadlift for Sophia because her previous PB, I believe, was 242.5. So she's looking to cap off a 9 for 9 day. Get set. And hips are high. And wham. As soon as it comes off the floor, a little sticky. She is ecstatic. Good for Sophia. This was her signature performance. Really a phenomenal performance by Sophia Ellis. Goes nine for nine, hits PBs uh, in the squat, the deadlift, I believe the total as well, and just really a top-notch lifter for Great Britain. Her arrow is definitely pointing up. And so she is in fourth place. Now you've got Carlina coming out for... 245 kilos. As I said, all she had to do was bump up her deadlift 2.5. Not going to take any risks here. There's only one day out of the calendar year when you can be an IPF world champion. So PBs go out the window and you take the lowest amount that you need to secure the W. So she only needed to go up two and a half kilos. And this will effectively, when she locks it out, secure her IPF world championships and ladies and gentlemen, there is your 2023 IPF world champion, Carlina Tongatea. Locks out 245 kilos. Probably had another two and a half if she needed it. Uh, don't think she had a PB on the day, but didn't need it. Uh, just an exceptional nine for nine performance. And so now you've got Kimberly Walford coming out for 247.5. This would effectively be a Masters one that's between 40 and 49 years of age, IPF world record. So an M1 world record at 247.5 kilos, which is 545 pounds. And if she is able to secure this deadlift, she would be in the gold deadlift medal, deadlift medal position, at least temporarily ahead of Sophia Ellis, who took 245. But again, we've got Dana McNeil left to pull as well as Jessica Bittner. So Kimberly Walford coming out for 247.5. Uh, this would move her deadlift rank from fourth to first and her total rank from sixth to fifth. She's coming down to the end of her clock here, but she doesn't waste any time setting up. Kind of sticky. Really tough around the knee, but finally gets it locked out. Knees are straight and gets only one red card. Unfortunately for Kim, 
this lift actually gets overturned for supporting on the thighs. So it was called a good lift on the platform. The jury came and overturned it. And we had a lot of overturned lifts uh, at the IPF World Championships that week, but she was temporarily in first, and then unfortunately the lift was overturned, which dropped her down um, out of that gold deadlift medal position. So now we've got Dana McNeil, and this is, this is really interesting. Dana is loading up for an IPF world record of 262 kilos, and quite frankly, not really sure why she did this. The 240 uh, certainly didn't look like she had another 22 kilos, and she could have gone up seven and a half and checked a lot of boxes, um, namely moved up uh, into, into fourth place position, um, and also hit a personal best in total, a personal best in the deadlift, and taken gold at least temporarily uh, in the deadlift. So really not certain. Uh, just after talking to her coach, Mike Dushier, turns out she just wanted to kind of say that she would tried it, um, but just thought that this was um, really not the best coaching decision. I shouldn't say coaching or lifter decision. This was really Dana's call, I believe. Um, Mike just kind of co-signed on it. Not the decision that I would make as a lifter because really just 22 kilos is out of her wheelhouse and, and really not within her capabilities on this day based on how the 240 looked and based on her current PB. So she's setting up here, wants to take the deadlift world record for a ride at 262. And you'll notice barely comes off the floor. Um, she seems upset, but nobody in the building is really all that surprised. Um, just wasn't gonna go on that day. So again, kinda, kinda perplexed as to why she didn't take a seven and a half kilo jump put herself in a position to check those other boxes. But nevertheless, now you've got the final deadlift of the day. Jessica Bittner uh, had her second deadlift overturned, so she's coming out for 263, which is gonna move her into second place. If she gets this lift, she would overtake Agatha Sitko uh, being the lighter lifter. And this will take her deadlift rank from fifth to first. So she's essentially uh, just can't be caught. She can't be bumped off the podium. So everything to gain, nothing to lose, loading up for the silver medal position on the podium. And only gets up to the knees and she pretty much just runs out of gas. Yeah, the 252.5 just took too much out of her. And so Jess misses her final attempt and will remain in third place overall. And who would have thought that Jessica Bittner would not be able to secure a deadlift medal on the day? So really crazy. But Sophia Ellis winds up taking the gold medal in the deadlift. How about that? But your IPF world champion there, uh, here's the final results. And uh, so the nominations held pretty close to form in terms of Carlina coming in, securing the world championship. Uh, Jessica Bittner and Agatha Shitko kind of flip-flop places there. Agatha was in second place on 590.5. And then finally, Jessica Bittner uh, winning the world championships last year, going seven for nine, uh, not being able to secure those final two deadlifts, which really cost her in terms of the total, and placing third with 567.5 kilos. And that concludes the 76 kilo class at the 2023 IPF World Championships. Uh, but it was a, definitely a battle, a clash of these three titans, if you will, and really just an exciting competition. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, drop comments in the below. And uh, I really look forward to your feedback. Thank you again for watching.